The roster's down to 58 as the Predators send a handful of players back to their respective juniors teams. We're going to tell you who is on the move, who is sticking around, and which players we think have a chance to go the distance on today's Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast. We're a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to kick off this episode with a hello and welcome to any first time listeners. Of course, a hello to our everydayers and a shout out to our Locked on Predators insiders. We appreciate you all joining us. We love that we get to spend a little bit of your day with you. I'm Ann Kimmel. I am a writer with Penalty Box Radio and my friends, I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Emma Lingen and I'm the Predators site editor and reporter for the Hockey News. Well, the first training camp roster moves have happened. We're going to talk today about the players that are headed back to their juniors teams. We're also going to talk about one player in particular who signed on the dotted line before he headed out of Nashville. Emma and I are also going to tell you the guys we think could stick around for the long haul. Before we dive into all of that training camp talk, we do want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Okay, Emma, I had this thought at the beginning of the show, and I always refer to you as my partner in crime. And I think one day we need to dedicate an entire episode to the crimes Anne and Emma would commit. <laughs> well, I don't know if we want to open up that pandora's box but i mean it could be used against us for like premeditation that may, there may exactly. go our defense. yeah i was just like hmm I, i've got an invisible backpack of hockey grudges and uh yeah there may be some crimes that we would commit but that's that is not going to be the topic for today lots I like of to great think our our criminal activity, though, would be like for good. We would use very, it for good. You very know? Batman-esque. That is yes. who we are as people. Yes. We are the heroes that that Nashville, What what is it that they deserve or that they don't, or they, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yes, Whatever the I know what you're talking Batman about. Thing yeah. is. I like, love the show. Did you ever watch the show Arrow? On the no, CW? but I, I know of it. Yeah. We were obsessed that was like our family obsession for a long time and he would always show up and he would say you have failed this city and i'm like emma and i need a crime spree tagline like that so yes. we're going to workshop that if you have suggestions please drop them in the comments on this video because you know just if if there is some sort of mysterious crime fighter that shows up in nashville and handles hockey business it may or may not be emma and i yeah just saying You've yeah. never seen us and Batman in the same place. That's all I'm going to say. That's right. Batman does not, in fact, host this podcast. Yeah. Something to think about. Yeah. Okay. Besides our crime spree, we're going to talk about some hockey things, some some training camp news, of course. Lots going on. The Predators uh, have announced their first round of roster moves on Monday. And we want to get to uh, talking about who has moved, why we think those move were, were moves were made. We're going to look at the current roster as it stands going into uh, practice today. But first, we do want to talk about kind of some big news. Uh, the Nashville Predators have signed a young Sprout to a three-year ELC. All right. So, Emma, we talk a lot about, you know, lingo here and there about, you know, different hockey terms and different uh, trade terms and this and that. Tell us, for anybody who doesn't know, what is an ELC? So an ELC is an entry-level contract, um, and it's used, it comes with different term depending on the player's age. So it's, um, you know, I think if you're 18 or 19, the entry-level contract is three years, um, and it comes with a slide rule, which means that the player 
can play up to nine games at the NHL level before their contract kicks in. And if they only play nine and then go back to juniors, then they, you know, they, they're still under that contract. And for each year that their contract does not kick in because they haven't played enough games or any games at the NHL level, another year gets added to the ELC. So that's how the slide rule works. But um, with these, these players, you know, when you draft a player, you're not actually, you know, it's not in hockey. It's not like other sports. They're not going to, for the most part, not going to play for you right away. Um, So you're not necessarily drafting the player. You're just drafting their negotiating rights. And so with depending on where these players are from that you're drafting them, you have different windows to negotiate with them. So I think European players and uh, like NCAA, I believe, I think you get up to four years uh, to the team gets up to four years to have exclusive negotiating rights with that player. After four years, if you have not signed them to a ELC, then they become a free agent and they can sign with whoever they want. Uh, For Canadian Hockey League affiliated players, teams only get two years to negotiate after drafting a player. So there is a benefit. You know, I get people asking me a lot. It's like, why? What's the what's the rush here? What's the point Mm -hmm. of these guys if they're not going to play? at the NHL level anytime soon. Well, that's why it's because you don't want to lose their negotiating rights. So now with, when you sign a player to an ELC, you have exclusive rights to negotiate with that player as long as, you know, they remain under or within the the time frame of that contract. Yeah. Hockey is so nuanced. Like I like what you say that there are so many ins and outs of, you know, when you draft a player, when you see a player, it's so different than the NFL, than the NBA. And then you run into all of, like you say, these nuances and the slide rule and, and, you know, the window you have to negotiate and all that kind of thing. So that is, um, what an ELC is. That's kind of a better understanding of what happened today. The Predators signed Hiroki Gosich to his ELC. And you mentioned kind of the smaller window for somebody in the CHL. Do you think that's part of this decision? And how do you feel about this? Yeah, I think it is. I mean, we saw something similar last year. You had uh, Kalen Lind and Tanner right. Mullendyke sign those those contracts their first year in the organization, and you know, and, and people would ask, well, why why didn't the Predators sign Matthew Wood? And it's like, well, because there's not as much of a rush with him because he's an NCAA guy, so they have a longer window to negotiate with him. With with these players, if you see a player that you really like okay, this guy is part of our future in this organization. You, you want to lock them up if they're, if they're coming from the CHL because you, you have a much shorter window. So I think that, you know, Hiroki Gosich, especially in, in the rookie camp and the rookie tournament has looked very good. He yes. has really stood out. And so I think that he's definitely come to camp and he said, Hey, I'm, you know, like I'm here to, I'm here to play and I'm here to earn a spot. And so I think this is kind of a, an honor, a, a recognition of that. So I think that it's a good signing. I mean, he's, He's got size, he's physical, mm-hmm. he's got that scoring touch. I mean, I he's young, obviously, lacks some polish, but that's to be expected. Um, you know, third round pick in this year's draft, I think that he definitely has a very bright future. So I I like the signing. I agree with you. I feel like we saw some things from him that make this feel like, okay, this is, you know, a good time. He is 6'3", 198 pounds is what he is listed as, but he is only 18 years old. So there is a chance that he could continue to grow. One of the things that was so interesting to me is he was wearing number 92. And if for a moment you weren't paying attention, he is built a little bit like a Ryan Johansson, kind of that freakishly large in a strange way. Um, it and is, so it's a little bit of a jump scare out there where you <laughs> look and you're like, wait, 92, what's he wait. doing out there? <laughs> and then there is a Johansson skating around yes. that is very confusing. But yeah, I really like this. And we talked with him at training camp. He says, look, you know, my game, I'm a shoot first player. 
and he does. He really has had a great shot. He had a couple of goals in the rookie showcase games. He did play his first game this weekend against NHLers in the preseason doubleheader in Florida. Um, so I, I really, I agree with you. I think, you know, this is a young player. This doesn't mean we're going to see him this season in Nashville gold. He's going back to the Kelowna Rockets where he's going to play there. Um, but I really think we saw more of him than maybe I expected for somebody coming in right out of being drafted. So, you know, I like, I like this. I think, I think this is a good, this is a good move. And, and I think it's a, a great thing for him as well. A good vote of confidence for the work that he's put in. Coming up, we're going to tell you who else is headed back to their junior team. And Emma and I are going to share our thoughts on which young players we think may stick around for the long haul. I know the Tennessee Titans regular season, friends, has not started off like fans in Nashville would have hoped. But don't worry, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. FanDuel has all the information you need right at your fingertips to kick off your successful season. When you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your your first $5 bet. So be sure you check out all of the action at FanDuel.com. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. Okay, Emma and I are headed back to training camp this morning. I'll be listening to my Broadway cast album as I drive down to Ford Ice Center Bellevue. <laughs> on tomorrow's show, you, we're going to give you some updates on maybe some things that have changed since Andrew Brunette has seen the team in two preseason games. And we're also going to tell you what has stayed the same because I think some of the things that have surprised me the most from this camp are the things that have been consistent. Also, big celebration on the show tomorrow. Tomorrow, my friends, as I'm sure we're all getting ready, ready to celebrate, it is National Math Storytelling Day. Everybody loves that day. It's going to be a big party here. We are going to celebrate by looking at some stats that could tell an interesting story for the Nashville Predators this season. So be sure you tune in tomorrow. Everybody start singing your, your math storytelling carols and writing your math storytelling <laughs> cards because, you know. That's right. Put your calculator out by by the chimney and, <laughs> and maybe you'll get a protractor. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure, but we're going to celebrate it. Uh, we may wear our ugly math storytelling sweaters. I don't know. <laughs> Bake some math storytelling cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the cookies. I don't really care what holiday it is. Like I'm no. here for any holiday cookies, but yeah, right. it's going to be, a, it's going to be big. So bring your festive attitude and a willing spirit. And we're yes. going to talk about some, some numbers for you. Uh, for today, though, we are going to take a look at the roster changes that the Predators made on Monday. There are some players that we need to talk about that will not be back at training camp this morning when we get there. Emma, the Predators have sent some of their players back to their respective juniors teams. Kaylin Lind is one that we've talked quite a bit about, heard from. Oh, have we heard from Caitlin Lind at Rookie Camp and Training Camp, which is always delightful. But Caitlin Lind headed back to the Red Deer Rebels in the WHL. Miguel Marquez back to the WHL. Joey Willis, Dylan McKinnon, and Jacob Mulata. All of those players will not be at training camp. They are being sent back to their juniors teams. How do you feel about that list, Emma? And, and what does this move say or not say? about these players. I mean, no real surprises here. Those are all guys that, you know, you you're not expecting to really be part of the plan for the Predators this year. Um so, you know, you you've kind of seen what you need to see from them and it's best for them, you know, best for the players to go, you know, head to their junior teams and and you know, start preparing for their season there uh just because it's not really fair to them or fair to the rest of the team here of who's left in Nashville, um, you know, to be kind of extending their time when they're not going to be, I would say not needed here. Right. Um, and it, what it doesn't say 
is anything about, you know, their performance at camp. It's not a punishment. It's nothing like that. It's just, this is, this is the way she goes. You know, these guys have been here, all of the guys that you mentioned who have been cut from the roster have all been here since the beginning of rookie camp. So they've been here for a minute, you know, and, and right. they, they've put in their time, they put in the work and now it's time to go back and get ready for their season. Yeah. And their seasons are starting. So some of these teams, you know, have games already started or are starting their season immediately. So their teams are looking to get their full rosters back for their season. You know, um, Caitlin Lind, I think it's going to be great to see him in another year. So much growth from him from his first season to this season on the ice. I think also off the ice. I do think to his time back uh, with the Red Deer Rebels is going to be great. He was an associate captain last season. So this is a young man who's opportunity to be in kind of that leadership position. And I agree with you. He had a good rookie camp. He was everywhere. Y'all, he was everywhere in a uh, training camp, doing everything, stirring the pot, uh, very Kiefer Sherwood-esque in, in training camp. But I do think it's going to be great for him to kind of get back, see what he does next season. The other one that I thought had a really great stretch in Nashville, uh, Joey Willis, I thought had a really great stretch. Um, last season, he played 66 games in uh, with Saginaw Spirit, 50 points. But I thought he looked great in rookie camp and the rookie showcase. I thought he really had a really good time here in Nashville as well. Yeah, he was a guy that I would say you noticed him a lot more mm -hmm. this year than you did last year. Um, he, you know, he's coming off a, a Memorial Cup championship with Saginaw and um, the guys were chirping him about that, uh, especially Andrew Gibson. Um, oh, yeah. And so I think it's, you know, he's a guy that he was definitely more noticeable this year and not just because he scored the goal in the, in the rookie, um, the rookie showcase, but it was, it was more just like, he looked a little more confident out there. He was taking up more space and just kind of demanding more attention out there. So you can tell the confidence he's building in his game and I'm sure winning a Memorial cup, you know, had to have helped with that. Yeah. So these guys stepping away from training camp, returning to their juniors teams, there are some players that have remained on the roster coming up. We're going to take a closer look at who is still here on the roster for training camp. We're also going to make some predictions about who we think may stick around longer and which players we think really have a shot at an opening night roster spot. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Indeed. Just like your favorite sports teams, we are all driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed. Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and let them know you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Again, that is indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you have to do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's the way daily fantasy sports should be played. It's not you against a thousand strangers, it's just you against the Prize Picks projections. 
projections for your favorite players in your favorite sports. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy so that your lineups stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return with prize picks, your picks are still alive. We know the Preds lean big time on UC Soros to protect the net. Why not include a more pick on Soros saves once that hockey season gets rolling? Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On NHL and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's code Locked On NHL on Prize Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play. $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Price picks. Run your game. All right, Emma, when we take a look at the remaining 58 player roster, there are definitely more players that I think are probably going to head back to, you know, their respective juniors teams. But, you know, I want to talk about two of the players that are still here who could stick around a little longer, and that's Tanner Mullendyke and Andrew Gibson. Tanner Mullendyke, of course, plays for the Saskatoon Blades, Andrew Gibson with Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, what are you thinking about these two? You know, we've we've touched on them, you know, with rookie camp. Do you see them maybe getting a longer look? Yeah, definitely. Especially, I think, with Gibson. Obviously, he this is his first camp with the Predators, you know, after they traded for him uh, during the offseason. So this is their first time really getting an extended look at him. Um, and so I think that you have him and then Molendyke, obviously first round pick a guy that is really expected to be a big part of the future for this organization and, you know, nothing set in stone, but I would imagine the, you know, the ultimate goal or the vision here is to have these two guys kind of anchoring the defense. And yes. so if you can have the two of them, if you can get them an extended look, and, you know, have them spend more time together on the ice developing that chemistry. I mean, that's only going to benefit them. Yeah, I agree with you. I think what we've seen from the two of them playing together is such a great um, preface to what could be to come with the two of them. There are two players who I think the Predators really, like you said, will want to get a little bit of a longer look at. Gibson, maybe because he's a little bit newer. But again, remember, this is a player that the Predators had their eye on in the draft that was here in Nashville. So they've done scouting on him. They like a lot about his game, even before they traded to get him here. So they're invested in these two players. But again, this is where Nashville is, and it's a beautiful place to be, and it's rare. They don't have to rush these guys. No. So I think we're going to see them a little bit more. I think Nashville would like to maybe see them perhaps in another preseason game. We'll have to kind of wait and see what happens come Friday. Uh, but these are two players that I think could stick around just – a little bit longer. When you're looking at this remaining 58 man roster, who are the players or, or who is the player that you think this is somebody who is going to stick around for a while? I mean, we already know how I feel about Mark Del Gaizo. That <laughs> well, he's a guy. Um, you know, I think that he's certainly going to, going to stick around for a while. I know a guy like Adam Willsby. I know Barry Trotz is really high on him. You know, he's a guy that I could see getting an extended look. I look at Ozzy Weisblatt as well as another one that I think that, you know, he might be around a little bit longer um, because the organization very high on him when, you know, San Jose essentially just kind of gave up on him and, and, sent him to Nashville and or really loaned him to Nashville mm -hmm. for the playoffs. And then Nashville said, oh, we like this guy. And so I think he's a guy that that you'll probably see maybe sticking around a little bit longer as far as these younger guys, these prospects go.
Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I think defensively, we're going to see a little bit longer look at like Ryan Ufko, Adam Willsby for sure, maybe Jake Livingstone, because Nashville, while their lineup for, for the NHL is relatively set, there is the Spencer Stasny situation. I think you and I both agree Mark Delgaizo is probably for us kind of next man up into the roster. Um, I think that they're going to want to sort those guys out. Where are they? And kind of figure out developmental wise, where are these defensemen and who would be the next, next man up? Yeah, that that's what I was going to say. It's not just about development. I mean, obviously that's a big piece of it, but a big part of training camp, you know, with, with most of the roster, as you said, for the most part set. Mm -hmm. save like maybe one or two spots like the roster is pretty much set for opening night what you're trying to figure out now is when one of those opening night roster guys gets injured who's the guy that you're calling up and that right. is what you know these guys are getting these extended looks for and you know you want to have a plan in place as soon as a forward gets hurt as soon as a defenseman gets hurt as soon as you know obviously you don't wish for that but it's you got to plan for the worst and so i think that that's what this is about now is you're figuring out who gets the call when something goes wrong. Yeah. I'm curious also to see how long Zachary LaRue is here. And this is why we have seen him pretty consistently in training camp and practices on a line with Cole Smith and Michael McCarron. And that is a very fun line to watch. That was a huge line for the Nashville Predators last season, the identity line. Of course, they lost Kiefer Sherwood. And I've always stood by the fact that I feel like Zachary LaRue is the apples to apples closest comparison to Kiefer Sherwood you're going to get, except for experience. Doesn't have the NHL experience. And, you know, remember, he's only got one year of pro hockey underneath his belt. So for me, I'm curious to see how much trust they put into Zachary LaRue. Could he make the opening night roster? I'm just not sure because he is a little bit more inexperienced. Uh, I think you could in theory slot in you. So Parson in, in that line, you and I talked on yesterday's show, you know, maybe we want to see a little bit more from Parson in, in training camp. I'm curious to see how that spot kind of sifts out. And if Zachary LaRue can do enough to get that shot. And also you have to factor in the two contracts that those players have and who should start in the NHL and who should not maybe start in the NHL and what you risk by putting one in the lineup and one not in the lineup too. So I think there's a lot of factors to, that go into that. And that is what I'm really watching. Well, and we talked about, you know, I mentioned the slide rule earlier. There's always, in theory, you could have Zach LaRue start the season on the NHL roster, play nine games, and then go back down. To me, I don't really see the benefit in that right now uh, mm -hmm. for, for the player or the team. Um, another thing that I think is important to keep in mind, uh, not that this is maybe at the forefront of the – of Barry Trotz or Andrew Brunette's mind, but we have seen some injuries already in yes. training camp in the preseason. We don't have updates on those at the moment, but Reed Schaefer and Fedor Svechkov, that's like two thirds of your top line in Milwaukee. Right. That is now hurt. Now we don't know how serious those injuries are. It might just be precautionary. Like let's not risk them getting hurt before they go back to Milwaukee. But uh, keeping that in mind, you know, it's like, well, Zach LaRue might be um, the only, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's him like he's he's one of the guys like you're really going to I mean, you relied on him before, but you're really going to rely really gonna on him that. to to generate some offense down in Milwaukee. Again, that is not the the primary concern really of anyone at training camp, except maybe Carl Taylor. But e even he is probably less concerned about that right now. I think that it's, you know. I understand. I understand people are excited to see Zach LaRue. I think he's a fun player to watch. And obviously, first round pick, lots of upside. He had a great, great playoffs with Milwaukee last year. Um, I, again, I think he it's kind of a similar argument to what I made about what we both made about Yaroslav Askarov. 
great player, tons of skill, tons of upside. Right now, I don't see the benefit mm-hmm. in having him on the roster over a Tomasino or a Parsonen, right. especially with the financial piece that you mentioned. Both Tomasino and Parsonen are on one-way contracts now. So it it's a lot more difficult, you know, to, to finagle the finances when right. you have those guys playing in the AHL. So it's just something that it's, it's the nature of it. But I think that people kind of get hung up on this idea that someone, you know, whoever it is, pick the guy that you don't like on the Predators roster. And it's like, well, he's blocking a spot from Zach LaRue. Mm-hmm. If the Predators coaching staff and management truly believed that Zach LaRue was des- or any pick a player in Milwaukee was Anything. deserving of that spot. He would have it. They mm-hmm. would figure it out. They would figure out a way to make it happen. This happens all the time. It's done all the time. They're not, you know, Barry Trotz is not sitting in his office, you know, losing sleep over the fact that, oh, we're paying this one guy $800,000, so our hands are tied. Like, no. If there's a player that's going to make the team better and that's going to help the team win, that player will find his way onto the roster, mm-hmm. and and they will make sure of that. So I think that, again, it's great that we're getting this extended look at Zach LaRue, but like you said, he's only got one year, one, one year, year. Pro hockey under his belt. Yeah. And again, I know we keep coming back to this. Luke Evangelista is the exception. (laughs) He's not the rule. That doesn't usually happen. Usually with these guys, they're spending three, sometimes four years in the AHL. Now, I before anyone freaks out, I'm not saying that I think, yeah, we're not going to see Zach LaRue for another four years. But I think that it's just everybody, you know, just hold hold your horses. Patience. Patience. Yes. Yeah. And I love what we've seen from Zach LaRue. I hope we continue to see a little bit more from him in training camp. We get a longer look at him, but I am with you in that you don't need to rush it. I also think we have to remember that there is a mind shift when you're going into training camp this season as compared to last season, because last season it was house money. Nobody had expectations. And what was the word that we heard all through first day of training camp? expectations. This is a team that they want to put together on the ice from the start of the season that can win enough games to compete and earn a spot into the postseason, and then anything can happen. So there's a little bit of a different lens, I think, in training camp as well. I think there's more of a critical eye. There's more of an eye for we need NHL experience as well. And and nothing is going to hurt Zach LaRue to go back to Milwaukee, nothing but gravy for Zach LaRue, you know, there as well. But it has been really fun to see him with Smith and McCarron kind of playing in that line. So, you know, let's see what the lines are in training camp today. You don't know, you know, Andrew Burnett may have seen some things in this preseason doubleheader where he says, hey, I'm going to switch some things up. We're going to let you know what we see on tomorrow's episode. And of course, remember, it is National Math Storytelling Day tomorrow. So get ready to be jolly and talk some statistics with us on tomorrow's show as well. Before we sign off today, though, Emma, let everyone know where can they find you and your work? You can find me on social media at Emma underscore Lingen, and you can find my work at The Hockey News. And you can find me on social media and K underscore mama on ice. You can find my work at penalty box radio as well. That's going to do it for today's episode of the lockdown predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We will be back tomorrow with training camp updates and a little holiday cheer. We'll see you then.